Hey class, it's, I really wish I could see you in person. Um, I really miss all of you so much. And I know you, I'm hoping you guys miss me, especially being in the classroom. I know some of you guys have got to be tired of class. I'm um, tongue tied. I know most of y'all are tired of probably just sitting at home or staying at home doing work, and you're not with me physically. Um, so today we're going to talk about angles and triangles. There are, um, if you look in one of your book, we're on page 245, okay? And we have angles and triangles. So angles, sometimes they can be exactly the same. Kind of like when we talked about the shapes and they were having to be congruent. You can have congruent angles. Because they're the exact same angle, they're, they're the same. So just like when we talked about geometry, you had congru congruent shapes you can have congruent angles also. Now, there are three types of angles that you can have. You can have a right angle, And that's 90 degrees. That's how much equals. You have a right angle, it's always going to be 90 degrees. Then you can have a cute angle. It's a little angle. I remember my teacher telling me it's a cute little angle. I just remember that. Because they're small, they're little. They're less than 90, always. Then you can have an obtuse angle. Which is bigger than 90. It's a big angle. And then you can have a straight a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. So obtuse angle is less than 180, greater than 90. So these are the different types of angles you can have. You can have a right angle, a cute little angle, an obtuse angle, and a straight angle. So these are the four types of angles that you can have. So before we talk about the different types of triangles you can have. We're just going to talk about those angles for a minute. So I want you to look in your book on page 245. We're looking at number two. And we're ta just going to talk about the angles right now. Okay? So if we look at number one, if they're all shapes of triangles. Well, well, I guess we kind of need to talk about the triangles first. Well, let's look at number at 1A because we talked about this type of triangle. I mean, this type of angle. If you look at 1A, I mean 2A, this is the triangle it gives you. But if you look right here, that is a right angle. If it's a right angle, it's also called a right triangle. So, if it's an angle, you can put the box in, that's a right angle, also considered a right triangle. That angle is still going to be usually, is always 90 degrees. So, if you look at that triangle in your book, it has 90 and 60 for that vertice. So, so what you're going to have to do to figure out this missing angle, that's the one, the angle you're trying to find, what that angle equals. So you would say 90 plus 60.
Now think about that math right now. How what that would equal. Okay. 100 and 150. It's not saying this angle is 150. There's one more step you have to do to find that missing angle. You're going to have to take that straight angle that you learned about that's 180 degrees. You're going to subtract this from it. Think about the math there. What's the answer? It's 30, so that means that missing angle is 30 degrees. Okay, 2B is also the right triangle. So we know that that one angle is gonna be 90. Well, it's facing the other way. Let me try to try it like that one. That's 90. I told you the right angle is always going to be 90 no matter what. And then it says this one is 45. So you're trying to time the top one again. You do the exact same thing again. You say 90 plus 45, whatever your answer gets, you subtract it from 180, 180. And the only thing you're subtracting from 180 is because that's a straight line angle. That's the biggest angle you can have for right now. So try to do the math of 90 plus 45, think about it right now. And you get 135. Now you have your math here. You've got to subtract. Don't forget your rules for subtraction. Some of you forget them. You're going to have to go to your neighbor. If you have zero, you cannot take five away. You have to go to your neighbor next door and ask for a cup of sugar. He turns to a seven. The zero becomes a ten. Now you can subtract. Some of you always forget that step. And it's 45. So when you ever have a right triangle and you see it's 90 and 45, this one's automatically going to be 45. Or if you have 90 and 60, it's automatically going to be 30 for your right triangles and your right angles. It, if you look at number at um C, I'm gonna tell you something about that triangle. Well, that one's not quite right. It has the lines on like this. Okay, well those two little lines on each segment line means they're all equal. All those lines are congruent, those segments. So the name of this type of triangle is the equilateral. And equilateral means all sides are the same. Well, if all sides are the same, that means all the angles are the same. So if all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same, that should tell you automatically that angle is 60 without doing any work. But I'll show you. 60 plus 60 is 120, 180, 
minus 120 is 60. So equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. So if one angle, if both angles are 60, your missing angle is 60. If they're, so if they're both third, no, let's go see. Because it has to equal 180. So if you took this right there and added it here, you get that 180. All angles are going to equal that 180 that we're talking about right now. Then if you look at D, it gives you 115 and 25. I'll let you do the math. It gives you 140. Then you're going to take your straight angle and subtract 140 from that. And you get 40 degrees as your missing angle. Okay. So we talked about the right angle. The cute angle, the cute little angle, the obtuse angle, the straight angle. We talked about two types of triangles. The right tri the right triangle that has the right angle. We talked about the equilateral triangle that's all sides are the same, all vertices are the same. There's one other type of triangle. And that one's called an isosceles triangle. And that only has two congruent sides, not all the sides. So a isosceles ring has two congruent sides. That's all. So you have a right triangle, you have an isosceles triangle that's two congruent sides, an equilateral triangle that's three equal sides and three equal vertices. Now, if you look at number three on page 245, there was one I wanted to talk to you about. Look at 3D. It says two of the three angles are 50 and 40. And it wants to know what type of triangle is it? Is it an isosceles? Is it a congruent? Is it an isosceles? Equilateral or a right triangle? Well, you have to figure it out. Well, the way to figure that out would be to take 40 and 50 and add them together. And it's going to give you 90, so it's a right triangle. Okay. Number five, you're going to answer the questions about the triangle. Well, I'm only going to do a few of those. You'll do the rest on your own. These are the ones I'm going to do with you. The rest you're going to do on your own. 
think that's the ones yeah I wanted to help you with all right 5a which side is parallel to a b okay well this is your triangle rectangle Looks like that. Okay, so which parallel is which side is parallel to A B? It would be C D. Look at C. What is line A C called? What is that line called? Remember back into geometry, it's called a diagonal. Okay, look at E. What kind of angle is A, B, C? It's, you can put your little square there. That means it's a right angle. Okay, F. Diagonal A, C divides a, B, C, D into how many triangles? How many triangles do we have now? We have two. And then G are all the sides of the rectangle congruent. Are all the sides the exact same? No, they're not. These two sides are the same and then these two sides are the same. So they're not congruent. So that's your lesson on angles and triangles. If you need any help, please let me know and I'll be more than glad to help you. You know that's what Ms. Sewell's here for, to help you guys. Bye. I really hope I can see you soon.